Do you like playing volatility? Volatility is the measurement of how explosive something is about to be. And the reason you're gonna to wanna to watch this video to the very end is because explosive moves are how you make a bunch of money. And there's one indicator that's very good at catching explosive moves. In this video, I'm talking about Bollinger Bands. Bollinger Bands were created by a guy named John Bollinger, which crazy enough, my dude is still alive. Now, admittedly, he has mentioned he's not the greatest trader in the world. That's okay, neither am I. I don't know who is, actually I do, Dennis Dick. Dennis is the greatest trader of all time. Here's his social media handle, make sure you follow that guy. But what I will do is I'm gonna walk you through how I have used Bollinger Bands recently. And if you are bored, you're gonna watch that video. It's a video I came out with eight years ago about how to trade Bollinger Bands. And really, the information's about the same. What's really fascinating about not only Bollinger Bands, but all indicators is they are free to use. And if you use them as part of your step through analysis of analyzing and predicting what you want to happen, and if you use the indicator adequately and properly, you should be able to make some great money. So Bollinger Bands. Here in Trading View, if you come over to Indicators and just type in B O L L, Bollinger Bands, it'll come up pretty quick. And there's a few different creations here from other individuals and other creators out there on the interwebs. But basic Bollinger Bands right here is just going to be good old simple volatility. Now, to describe how this works, the Bollinger Bands get smaller as the price continues to compress. I came up with a word not that long ago, and that word is compressor, which stands for compression and pressure. Because at some point, a stock has to move fiercely in one direction or another, and it's really not gonna get stuck for a very, very long period of time. And if it does, there can be certain strategies that you can implement to really catch massive moves of volatility in one direction or another. And the best part about not only Bollinger Bands, but trading in general, is that changing time frames doesn't cost you any money. In fact, it's totally free. So anytime you wanna change a time frame from daily, weekly, or monthly to look at how the Bollinger Bands are reacting or whatever indicator you're using, you can do that and it will help you kind of sustain your analysis on what you're expecting something to happen. So Bollinger Bands, I'll show you a trade that was really intriguing to me on PayPal. And then just for all intents and purposes, I'm gonna link that exact same analysis in this video so that you can see what I was doing at the time and you'll see how I kind of used Bollinger Bands in real time a couple weeks ago. PayPal, when's PayPal gonna pop? That is a great question. Bollinger Bands, let's pull it up. Bo the good old Bollingers, I haven't looked at Bollingers in forever and we are getting a squeeze on a weekly chart. The squeeze is home. So it's coming monthly, not yet daily. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta squeeze on the daily chart. Where is that Bollinger band? Yeah. I mean, it is compressing and they had, they had pretty good earnings and they did close. We have closed above that volume and we've retested this volume. I mean, I, there's a few different ways to play this, but I would either be getting into shares and then getting into some, Put protection, probably a bear put spread to protect myself on the downside to a debit spread and hope for a pop. If and when it pops up into a resistance, sell the shares or get into a covered call and then get into a collar. Possibly number two is get into a uh, semi longer term June or July strangle, buy some, out of the, buy some 55 puts and some 65 calls for June and see if it breaks out between now and June. That's really it. One of those two. The pressure is building on PayPal. Something's brewing. So PayPal. PayPal got itself into a little bit of a Bollinger Band squeeze recently. What you'll notice is this portion of the band really started collapsing together. And what you will also notice is it was pretty far away from the Bollingers, right? The Bollingers weren't extremely close to each other until right here. Right here, the bands got pretty close together. Salmon Point, they got pretty close together right there. The closer those Bollinger Bands get together and the more they start trading sideways and then the price action's trading within that band, the tighter the band gets to the stock price, 
at some point you're going to get a move in one direction or another. And of course, you can use the rest of your analysis that will help you determine what move that might be. But it sure is good to know that a big move is coming and you can put on your watch list and start planning on something happening soon. Here's the weekly chart on PayPal. Now, the weekly chart, if I just hide my drawings for just a moment, what we were getting on the weekly chart is we were also getting, as you'll notice, this pull into the bottom band, a trade up, and then notice how that middle band, that 20 period moving average was acting as a support. And notice the bands got pretty flat. And right here, you actually had the smallest width of the Bollinger Bands. There actually are indicators called Bollinger Band width indicators as well. Because again, the wider, the more volatility, the tighter the bands, the less volatility. If you're an options trader, volatility is really fun. You want volatility to be high. If you're a day trader, you want volatility to be high. How do you feel that knowing a stock is in a very non-volatile state would help you in your investing? And in my opinion, the answer is, well, you know that you should probably wait to do something because a big move is coming and you should be more patient if it's in a non-volatile state. That's not really the time to be making aggressive big moves. And last but not least, here was the monthly chart on PayPal at the time. And again, you can start to see right now we actually are getting a little bit of a compressionary state. In fact, this was the tightest the Bollinger Band ever was, but that was when it was just first created. And right now we are getting to very, very close on the tightest that's ever been since the inception of the Bollinger Band on this monthly chart on PayPal. All right. So a stock that's in real time on this video that is doing a Bollinger squeeze is Roku. And Roku is working on breaking out, but we need a close above or below the band for this puppy to really work. So again, I'm going to hide all my other indicators. And what you'll see here on Roku is this is indeed a Bollinger Band squeeze. This had a huge volatile move, boom, 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 and now is forming what's referred to commonly as a line pattern. A line pattern is when the stock is just creating almost like a barcode at a store, very, very small, white and black, just boom, 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 really, really tight compressionary stage. And what happens here is Roku is working on closing past one of the bands. Now, the strategy that I will teach you for free right now, for those of you who made it this far into the video, to play Bollinger Band squeezes is one of two. There are two strategies that I will use and I will implement. Strategy number one, pretty basic, wait for a close past top or past the bottom of the Bollinger Band. So as of today in this recording, you have this bottom lower shadow here. This bottom lower shadow, you'll also see, by now my line's back on the screen, this bottom lower shadow is really conducive to the lower shadows that came in from these candles over here. So we got lower shadows, lower shadows, lower shadows. So there's definitely some algos and some really aggressive buyers down there around 62. If slash when Roku closes below the low of those candles, those candles, those candles, those candles, and today's candle, it will be closing not only below those wicks, but it will also be closing into the bottom Bollinger Band after a Bollinger Band squeeze, which tells me that some good volatility is about to pick up on Roku, aka watch it for day trades, aka begin to plan it on an option strategy, which brings me to strategy number two. One strategy you do not want to trade on Bollinger Bands is when you get a Bollinger Band squeeze, iron condors. That's a terrible, terrible strategy. I've actually seen a few instructors teach it because they're like, oh, well, now this price action is contained within the Bollinger Band. The problem with doing an iron condor when you have a Bollinger Band that has really, really tight compression is that the downside to doing an iron condor when the Bollinger Bands are really, really compressionary is when you sell your credit for both the bull put spread and the bear call spread, your premium is almost negligible because there's no volatility. And yes, you have to win on one of those sides, right? Either the bull put spread or the bear call spread. One of them has to win. What I can say is this, wait for that move to take place and then play a directional put or call if you're going to be playing options because volatility is low. And when volatility expands, the option prices expand. So getting into a iron condor when the Bollinger Bands are squeezing is a pretty disastrous strategy. Now, granted, of course, the price action could contain and stay within the Bollinger Bands and you actually end up making money on the bull put 
and the bear call spread. But again, the challenge of a Bollinger Band squeeze is at some point, it's going to have a big breakout and you do not want to be in an iron condor when you get a big breakout in one direction or another because you're going to get hosed on one of your legs of the condor. So the strategy that I implement is actually a strangle. A strangle is when you buy an out of the money put and an out of the money call. And you do that with the exact same expiration. So in this exact example, I'm actually in a strangle right now in Roku and I'm in for May. The reason I'm in for May is because this is also over earnings. And I'm assuming we're going to get a pretty good gap on Roku on earnings. Now, before earnings, if we can get a really, really good dump fest here in the next couple of days where we close below this candle, we close below these prior wicks, we break out of the Bollinger Band squeeze, and we really start dropping dramatically, the call option will become worth nothing, essentially negligible. It might have a little bit of money left on it because earnings is around. And what I would expect is Roku to just really, really start tanking. And if Roku tanks, the option price of the put obviously will increase and the call option will decrease or potentially stay the same. Then it's just really a math strategy. If Roku keeps going down and let's say it trades all the way down to 52, I sell my long put for a pretty decent win. And then I can now still have my call option just in case Roku does in fact have a big gap up on earnings. And if it does have a big gap up on earnings, I can either hold on to that call, which was essentially worth nothing, or I can sell it for a small gain uh, relative to before earnings happened, but a small loss after when I purchased the trade and end up winning on the trade overall because of the put. The cool part about options, I know you know this, but the really nifty part is you can only lose 100%, which means if you do the math, if I buy this option for $3 and I buy this option for $4, my total debit is, well, obviously seven. And if this particular option makes more than this particular option costs, so let's say, for example, four goes to nine, right? That is a $5 profit, which far surpasses the $3 cost. So essentially, if this goes to zero, I lose $3 and I'm up two between the spread of the of uh, the put because it increased so much in value. And then again, if I hold on to the call and it, I can sell it for a dollar, right? I lost $2 on this particular trade. I made money, $5 on this particular trade. So five minus two is a $3 profit per contract. Like that's not really that bad. And then of course, if something really interesting or unique happens and you start getting into advanced option strategies where you hold on to the long put, you sell a put against the long put, create a bear put spread. And then if and when, Roku gaps up, you still have your long call, you sell a call against that. There's all kinds of things you can do. The strategy that I have found to be most useful and beneficial is when you notice a Bollinger Band squeeze to either set up your brackets for a close above or below the Bollinger Band and or just go ahead and get into a strangle. Again, a strangle is buying an out of the money call and an out of the money put. And that was the trade that I implemented on PayPal that you just saw in the recording. Now, Looking at other stocks, 3M had one of these really interesting moves recently. And the super nifty part about 3M is there was also just a beautiful volume play here. So number one, and we're going to have some tons more videos as time progresses about the 10 EMA strategy, but here's the 10 EMA strategy on 3M. You had a bear candle closing above the 10, a second bear candle closing above the 10, a little bit of a double bottom here and a nice little pennant pattern breakout, beautiful gap retest gap, and then a takeout of that bear volume, and simultaneously a takeout of this bear volume. So you had a huge trap of that volume, you had a nice little trap of that volume, and you had a tinium play plus the double bottom. But you can see how well 3M moved. Now, if you're like, well, Newsom, I would have never known to take those tinium A's or hold the position. Well, again, if I pull up our boy Bollinger, and we look at the Bollinger band, uh, let's come over here, You'll notice that on the daily chart, we did actually have a Bollinger Band squeeze. Look at how tight this width of the move is relative to even just this width over here, this width over here, this width over here, this width over here. Like this is a tighter squeeze on the band. We traded sideways for a long time. We did get into a close into the top band, but right here is one of the strongest indicators for a move is a closed past the band, aka, you know, 
Nyarl, 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 Nyarl. When you get a close past the band, we will have a regression back into the band, right? But when it forcefully tries to make a move into the band and does not close into the band, that's a good reversal signal. So when you get a close into the band, right, this is a bearish close into the band, close into the band, regresses into the narrow arm, and then continues lower. And what happened? Fails to close into the bottom band again, which shows what? A sign of reversal. And then you get the 10 EMA, you get the double bottom, you get the gap, you get the volume trap, you get all the things, and you got a strong close outside of the top band, which says, hey, this trend is likely going to continue. Stay in, which means boom, 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 boom. You're staying in. This little retracement, you're not freaking out about it because it's just a healthy pullback because you got to close into the band and then this little push right here. Now, what if you just happen to be in this trade on 3M? You notice this candle did not close into the top of the band. Could that have been an appropriate time to exit and lock in profit? And my answer would be, yeah, sure, right? You're out of resistance. You failed to get to the top of the band. You're profitable in that trade. Get out. Now, again, how much does it cost to switch time frames? The answer, $3.99. The exact same amount of cost to get essentially your bachelor's degree in stock trading from reallifetrading.com. Make sure to go over to reallifetrading.com, this website and this video, and this YouTube page, and my shirt is sponsored by a company called reallifetrading.com, and click on any of these videos, any of our classes that are entirely free, and you know, check them out. So if we go in here to a weekly chart on 3M, what we will notice is we also are not into the top band or the bottom band right here. So again, this being a reversal signal, this being a reversal signal, and this being a reversal signal. Essentially saying, if you have positions, trim and trail, begin to protect, begin to watch, because we did not close past the band. And here is a monthly chart. Again, new lows coming down, not closing into the band. Also a pretty sketchy sign that the bear trend will continue. Fascinating. These Bollinger Bands, really, really cool. One of my suggestions from watching this video is go back and actually back trade using the Bollinger Bands to see if you can find a strategy that you really like. Keeping in mind that once you have a strategy, once you have your rules, and once you have, this is what I do, make sure that you stick to that plan for quite a long time. Use that for months or weeks or at least days so that you can have some type of measurable result on how well did I implement this particular tactic? How well did I implement this particular strategy? Because my friends, I know you know this, you've heard me say it a million times, everything works, just not all the time. What does work all the time is math. And if you get the math nailed down of trading, which is make more than you lose, reinvest your profits, use cash flow to then go buy long term assets and continue doing that over time, sticking to the same repeatable systems over and over and over. As you do that, your wealth will grow. If you enjoyed this video and you liked it, you already know how YouTube algorithm works. Just hit that like button and hit that subscribe button because I'm going to continue to out give, out provide and out help every other YouTube channel on the internet because that's what we do. Our mission of real life trading is to enrich lives. Thanks for watching this video on Bollinger Bands. You rock.